Paul Brunton's Spiritual Essentials. How Does Karma Work? Quest Series 3, Video Number 15, presented by the Paul Brunton Philosophic Foundation. It is absurd to think of the idea of karma as if it were some outlandish Asian fancy. Karma is simply the law which makes each of us responsible for our own actions and which puts us into the position of having to accept the results which flow from them. We may call it the law of self-responsibility. The fact that it is allied with the theory of reincarnation does not invalidate the law of karma, for we may see it at work in our own present incarnation quite often. Events and environment are attracted to us partly according to what we are and do, that is, our individual karma, partly according to what we need and seek to evolve, and partly according to what the society, race, or nation of which we are a member is, does, needs, and seeks, that is to say, the collective karma. Now and then karma unloads trials and troubles which are not pleasant to endure. All the same, they have something to teach us, if only the ancient lesson of the need to find a more satisfactory inner life to compensate for the transiency and the vicissitudes of the outer life. We cannot escape from these so long as we live upon this earth, but we can hope to understand them and eventually to master our mental reactions to them. Therein lies peace and wisdom. Although karma is clinched by what people do, in fact, it is built up also by what they have long thought and strongly felt. Those who harden themselves with gross selfishness and reject their gentler spiritual side through ambition or greed, through dislike or hate, must fall in the end by the karma they make into destruction by their own negative side. The moral fallacy which leads people to think that they can build their own happiness out of the misery of others can be shattered only by a knowledge of the truth of karma. A student comments. PB told me that religions have failed to instill ethical precepts this is really their one basic function, to educate the masses, but they have not succeeded in opposing violence. They have failed to teach the law of karma. Progress in self-evolvement on the quest must be due to the individual's own efforts. It can be encouraged or fostered only in proportion to the same individual's wishes and needs. Other people, who are not interested in an inner search, are at present fulfilling their own karmic need for a particular variety of experience. It is neither advisable nor feasible to urge them to follow this path. However, once we have committed ourselves to this quest, we will find that events so arrange themselves as to indicate our sincerity, examine our motives, display our weaknesses, and find out our virtues. Our devotion to the philosophic ideal will be tested. Our loyalty to the goal will be tried. Every test successfully met is rewarded by some growth in intuitive knowledge, strengthening of character, or initiation into a higher consciousness. The possibility of forgiveness for past errors depends upon a sincere, humble repentance in prayer, and to a certain extent on a self-denying amendment and a self-disciplining reform. If this is done, a basis for hope does exist and can be sought. 
The first value of repentance is that it makes a break with an outworn past. The second value is that it opens the way to a fresh start. Past mistakes cannot be erased, but future ones can be avoided. Instead of straining yourself in the futile task of trying to love unlovable people, it is better to learn how to give them enough goodwill to tolerate them. This is within your capacity. If you have to live with them or associate with them, you must try to put up with them, which means trying to put yourself in their place. And that is a most desirable spiritual exercise, an advanced stepping stone towards love itself. The practice of goodwill helps the practicer by creating good karma and shaping a good character. The thought of it, habitual and sustained, helps those who touch or move within your orbit. The profound meditation upon it repays you with blissful feelings and mystical harmony. If you can be nothing else, be kind to others. Each time you do this, you go out of your own little ego. You come a little closer to expressing the spiritual self dwelling hidden in your heart. Whatsoever we give or do to others is ultimately reflected back to us in some form by the power of karma. And if you frequently nurse the idea of serving mankind, you will attract to yourself the spiritual help of those who themselves have this same aim. A student comment. PB said that grace can come sometimes as a result of past karma and sometimes it is freely given as a new thing when somebody is in crisis. Your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions must work in combination to affect this great self-purification which must precede the dawn of illumination. And this means that you must work upon yourself and divert your attention from other persons whom you may have criticized or interfered with in the past. Aspirants must reserve their condemnation for themselves and leave others alone to their karma. Why blame others for what they do if their higher faculties have not yet awakened and possessed them? They are only doing what they can. Moreover, it is prudent never to condemn others, for others will then, by karmic law, condemn you. Envy not those with good fortune. The gods have allotted them a portion of good karma, but when this is exhausted, they will be stripped of many things except their inner spiritual possessions. When all malice and envy are resolutely cast out of your nature, not only will you be the gainer by it in improved character and pleasanter karma, but also those others who would have suffered as victims of your barbed words or ugly thoughts. From our study of the law of karma, we may deduce that each of us must grow up, become an adult, and learn to be responsible for our actions, decisions, emotions, and even thoughts. It is you who are accountable for which ideas, especially which impulses you accept and which you let pass or push away. Do your duty to the best of your ability, but preserve mental equilibrium at the results, whether the latter be success or failure. This is Karma Yoga. Paul Brunton, 1898 to 1981, a best-selling British author of a dozen books, spent much of his early life researching the original sacred teachings of Western and Eastern spiritual traditions. He traveled the world to discover and communicate with Christian, Kabbalistic, Vedantic, Buddhist, Taoist, indigenous, and Sufi masters. 
blending the richness of his own spiritual experience and inquiry with these ancient and contemporary teachings, he developed a philosophy and path of practice that suits life in the 21st century, one that expresses the greatest wisdom and love available to humankind. Regardless of how it is named, we each have a divine soul, an over-self or higher self, that is with us here and now waiting to be realized. Paul Brunton's writings are a source of deep spiritual guidance for all those interested in living a divinely inspired life. Anthony Damiani, 1922 to 1984, was a prominent teacher of Paul Brunton's ideas and founder of the Wisdom's Goldenrod Center for Philosophic Studies. Inspired to penetrate into and understand the depths of traditional wisdom, he taught classes on the major philosophies as well as the teachings of Paul Brunton. His dedicated students compiled the 16 volumes of Paul Brunton's posthumous writings titled The Notebooks of Paul Brunton, available from www.larsonpublications.com. The quotes for this video are taken from the following. The Notebooks of Paul Brunton, Volume 2, The Quest. Volume 3, Practices for the Quest. Volume 5, The Intellect. Volume 6, The Ego from Birth to Rebirth. Paul Brunton Foundation Videos. Quest Series 1, The Wisdom of Paul Brunton. Seven videos. Quest Series 2, Paul Brunton Answers Life's Perennial Questions. Five videos. Quest Series 3, Paul Brunton's Spiritual Essentials, is open-ended and new videos will continue to be added to those listed below. Please subscribe.